CES 2019 Day 3 Review, Laundry Folding Robots, Samsung's Folding Phone, and more coming up on today's episode of The Latest in Tech News. Hey Gadget here, you're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on everything tech, gadgets, and gaming news. If you're new here, be sure to click on that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss a single episode. My name is Taylor Merrick, and I'll be your host. Now, let's head on over and check out what happened today in the Consumer Electronics Show. First up, um, a machine that will fold your laundry debuts today at CES. I think it might have been like yesterday, possibly the day before, but yeah, this laundry folding robot is about to make your life a whole lot easier, as if folding clothes was difficult enough already. No more wishing your laundry would fold itself because now it can. Premiering this week, Foldymate is a laundry folding machine that has us in awe. This time-saving innovation will fold your clothing in less than five minutes, less than it'll take to brew a cup of coffee. And we got a couple pictures here, and I think I guess there's a video I, um, I'll have a video to this linked on the article. So if you guys want to watch a video that goes alongside this, um, all you got to do is click on the, on the article link in the show notes, and uh, you'll be able to go ahead and do that. By the way, if you're listening to the audio version of this, if you want to see the video version, just head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tech news gadget, and uh, you'll be able to watch the video there. Or if you're following us on Facebook, you could do that there as well. And if you're watching the video and you want to learn more about the show notes, well, there you go. So plug over for the site got a picture here of it, it looks like a kind of reminds me of like a, a a tall um dryer or a washing machine one of those vertical standing ones like a, with a washing machine and a dryer or like a, a, a shorter version of a microwave a microwave a fridge i can't tell i can't tell the difference between a microwave and a fridge and where it goes so we got a couple photos here, a couple ideas, concept, foldy mate, putting a tweet out saying why waste time folding laundry? Get yourself on a pre-order waiting list for your foldy mate while you still can. I guess there's gonna be a lot of demand around this, and um, understandably so. The Israel-based company of the same name says that the robot will fold most types of shirts, blouses, or pants from age six to adult size XXL. So had it on display at CES. Um, they're demonstrating a new device that folds your clothes automatically during the preview. So some of the highlights. Um, it will also fold standard size towels and pillowcases. Now, very simply, here's how it works. You'll feed your garments continuously while the machine will simultaneously fold them in seconds. And obviously it'll, it'll just stack them up below and then all you, all you gotta do is grab it, pull it out, and there you go. Um, I think it's a video. Can we play this video? So if you ever had the uh, chore of folding laundry or you never wanted to deal with it ever again, well, now you have a robot that'll do it for you along with um, making your coffee and um, frying your rice or, or burning it depending on whatever setting you choose. Okay, moving on. Um, while we're talking about CES, I, I, I do have to mention that with the product announcements and a lot of things going on, um, there's still tech going on outside, um, but we're just taking this week a little bit to just focus on the Consumer Electronics Show. Um, this is my first foray into the matter. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far, looking at everything coming out of CES, but by far the most exciting new product at the Consumer Electronics Show this year was only shown behind closed doors and only to a select few people. Now, you might be wondering, what might that gadget be? Who's the company? What were they looking at? Well, we got the inside scoop for you. You see, 
tech journalists and bloggers complain each and every year at the annual Consumer Electronics Show uh, that it's boring. Everyone complains about how boring it is, but this year is really more boring than ever. And Well, guess what? Everyone always complains about how boring CES is, but this year kind of is boring. Um, the VR stuff was kind of like a dream. Everybody's talking about 8K TVs, and we're like, well, we don't want 8K TVs because, you know, we don't have a lot of 8K type stuff media to watch. We have more 4K than 8K, but then more 1080p K, um, 1084, 60, 22 by 65. I don't know. Take a 2 by 4 and go, oh, look, it looks like real life. Well, I don't know. It's just... <sighs> so we got TVs, right? Um, we got smart assistants roaming the floors, right? We got a whole bunch of other cool stuff going on. Um, Obviously, if you want to find the really good stuff or the stuff that you know you really never hear about or cool, quirky stuff or crazy stuff, then you have to dig around a little bit for that. But um, there's only two things that uh, seem to have been unveiled at Consumer Electronics Show that have generated significant buzz. The first was uh, what I covered yesterday, which was the LG Signature OLED TV R, the incredible new 4K TV featuring a rollable display that retracts into the base. By the way, if you miss it, out on hearing about that news just tune into episode 77 and you'll get all that um keep in mind that lg announced it last year at 2018 um so it just redid it and it's saying nope we're not teasing it again we actually are making it actual actual real for real these guys please buy it um other buzzworthy products showing off doesn't even have anything to do with consumer like uh electronics or technology it's called impossible burger 2.0 and people who have tried it say that this time around it really does taste like actual meat and i actually had to go onto the website and figure out well what the heck is this apparently it's a burger that looks and functions just like meat but it's not meat it's plant it's plant-based substance thing and then i guess um However, it works out. They're able to figure out everything and, and what it needed to have to, you know, compare to meat. But you're not eating meat. It's actually a plant and various types of the plant and plant byproducts. So that was actually kind of impressive once I looked at it and people are saying, yeah, it tastes just like a burger. So anyways, um, I'm getting off on a beaten rabbit trail here. Um, the most exciting products from CES 2019 are a TV from 2018 and a veggie burger. Cool. Well, that's if you don't count one more new product that was only shown off this year behind closed doors. Now, Samsung had a lot to cover during its big press conference. For being honest, though, none of it was very exciting. Sure, the new TVs look great, and people willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for minor upgrades might be looking for to them. We also saw connected versions of all sorts of things, including kitchen appliances and air conditioners. Um, but if you have no interest in spending a month's salary or more on a new Family Hub 4.0 refrigerator or many, many, much more on the new wall of TV, probably weren't very impressed with the good Samsung showed off this year. Behind closed doors, however, entirely different story. Where Samsung's mobile business is concerned, 2018 was the worst year Samsung has had in a long time. And bear, keep, keep listening, there's a point to this. Sales were down all year long and took an even sharper downward turn in the fourth quarter, and people are still treating it like the reason why is still a mystery. Well, we'll crack the code for you. Samsung's 2018 flagship phones were boring. They're the exact same phones Samsung released in 2017, but a little more powerful and more expensive. Here's another shocker. You know how Apple's iPhone sales were down in the fourth quarter as well? Well, the reason is exactly the same here. Nothing truly new about the new iPhone aside from the sky-high prices. In 2019, Samsung is definitely going to make up for lost time. The company is set to blow us all away right out of the gate with a completely redesigned Galaxy S10 that's packed with nifty new tech like an in-display, ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, tiny bezels thanks to a hole cut out of the screen for the front-facing camera and a completely new rear camera system. But there's another phone set to debut a little later that many people find even more exciting. That's right. We're talking about the Galaxy F, or Galaxy Fold, that Samsung will be releasing later this year. Samsung gave the world a quick peek at its prototype of its first foldable phone during last year's SEC 2018 conference in December, but it was hidden behind a security case. Couldn't really make heads or tails of it, 
A new report from South Korean financial publication The Investor states that Samsung's partners got up close and personal with the device at CES 2019. Unfortunately, it all happened behind closed doors, so we don't get to see what they saw. According to the report, Samsung still has some hurdles to overcome before it can release the Galaxy Fold, and sadly the report makes at least one of those hurdles sound fairly serious. When unfolded, Samsung's foldable phone does not show any crease indicating it had been bent, an unnamed executive said. However, completely folding the device will break it. For this reason, Samsung is testing the device so that the sides remain slightly lifted when folded. The prototype seen today leaves a crease mark when being folded, but this issue will be fixed in the finalized version. Now, earlier reports have stated that the Galaxy Fold will be released by mid-2019, so Samsung apparently has its work cut out for it. And if it doesn't figure it out by mid-2018, it might be a fall release, or they might just wait until the beginning of next year to do it. As for pricing, a separate source told the site that the phone will cost at least roughly 13, maybe 1400 US dollars when it finally launches. But it will be a foldable phone. Might be game changing technology. We'll see. How does the consumer react to it? We'll have to see about that as well. Are they just going to snap it in half and sit on it and uh, be like, well, it's the foldable Motorola Razor 2.0? And then they flip it open and it snaps off and half of it goes flying off down. We'll find out. We'll find out. All the great fun stuff that goes along with new gadgets and technology blowing up in people's faces, burning their ear, um, lighting stuff on fire. All fun stuff down the road to figure out. Um, I don't know. Are you looking forward to a foldable phone? Let us know in the comment section down below if you are. And, well, if you're not, well, what would make you interested in a new tech type smartphone? Leave us a comment on that as well. Now, let's head on over to the last article in today's lineup. So, I've got a couple more things to cover. Um, so, latest finding and observations from the Associated Press reporters on the ground. Um, I have this article linked as well as everything else that I've talked about today over at the show notes for today's show, which you can find over at technewsgadget.net forward slash Seven eight seventy eight, and uh, you'll be able to get all the show notes there. Or, or here's something interesting: if you're listening to the podcast, all you have to do is scroll up or click on show notes for more details. And and, and my daughter is going to bed. I'll be I'm gonna say good night to her in a moment. Anyways, so I guess Ring is giving the old school people. Um, I can't read this article. Uh, my eyes. Okay, I had a long day at work. I come home. I'm figuring all this cool stuff about the Consumer Electronics Show and everything else that happened today, and then I have to mash it all together and put it into the show. So, understandably so. If I seem to be missing out and messing up, okay, I'll I'll live. Hopefully, if not. Um, if I don't, um, call me. I might be sitting in a house, hugging some Mountain Dew and popcorn. Anyways, <clears throat> okay. What was I talking about? Oh, gadgets. So Ring is giving the old school peephole a high tech spin. The company unveiled a new internet connected video doorbell that fits into most peepholes. The new device is aimed at apartment dwellers or college students who want a video doorbell, but may not be allowed to install one next to their doors. Now keep in mind that Amazon bought Ring last year, giving it a shot at competing better with Google's Nest, which also makes cameras and doorbells. Privacy experts have long sounded the alarm on Wi-Fi connected cameras and how video is stored. Now, Amazon recently filed a patent application for a facial recognition system involving home security cameras, which would allow multiple cameras to create composites of faces to identify people who may be trying to burglarize a house and notify police accordingly. It doesn't appear Ring uses facial recognition yet, as Ness already does, though Ring may add such features over time. Amazon did not respond to a request for comment. Now, the Ring's Door View Cam will go on sale in March for $199. Ring's new device will still act as a peephole, but will also send alerts to users' smartphones when the doorbell is pressed or someone knocks the door. Um, also, let's see. Smart glasses haven't been a hit so far, but at least one startup still sees them in our future. A company called North will be delivering its $999 smart glasses to customers in the coming weeks. Called Focals by North, they pair with a smartphone and show text messages, weather, and mapping directions on the glass that only the wearer can see. 
users also need to wear a ring with a joystick on their index finger so they can flip through messages or respond with their thumb. It can also be controlled using the built-in Amazon Alexa voice assistant, but the joystick has to be pressed down for it to start listening. Getting people to buy smart glasses has been a challenge and understandably so people are still picky about the whole thing. Google famously stopped selling its smart glasses to the public about four years ago, but I did cover something either earlier this week or last week um, about some replacement thing to make Google Glass go, oh man, we missed out on it. Well, we'll see. Aaron Grant, North's co-founder, says his product is different because they are designed to look like regular frames and prescription lenses can be added. But there's a small projector on one side and the frames on this side are slightly thicker. Another interesting product to come out of CES 2019 this year. Well, freshly baked bread. What do you mean? Well, Wilkinson Baking Company unveiled a 22 square foot machine that can bake 10 loaves of bread every hour with no baker required. But a human is needed to dump the ingredients into the machine, which then mixes them, forms the dough, and starts baking. Someone also needs to slice the bread, although the company says it's working on a way for the machine to do that too. The Breadbot, as it's called, is being pitched to supermarkets as a way to deliver fresh bread to shoppers who are increasingly worried about the ingredients in their food. The machine is covered in glass so customers can watch bread get made, which is pretty cool. They then select the loaf they want on a touch screen, kind of like a vending machine. Three local supermarkets are already testing it out. The company says a couple of big chains have agreed to try it out soon, but don't, won't say which. So, there you go. That's uh, all the news to cover for the Consumer Electronics Show today. By the way, if you happen to miss something on the show, there's something that you want us to keep you informed on. Be sure to let us know on Twitter, at Tech News Gadget, or just leave us a comment down below. We also have a community um, hanging around, either on the website or here, so um, be sure to leave a comment, maybe introduce yourself. Um, great community, and uh, we all like talking about tech and learning about tech. But uh, if you don't, that's, that's fine. We'll live. We'll be back tomorrow with more tech news for you. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to tell a friend. And, importantly, leave a like. That will do it for this episode of the Latest in Tech News. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick, for the Latest in Tech, Gadgets, and Gaming News. Be sure to head on over to technewsgadget.net. Pretty much, keep being awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.